कर दे मैं रिकॉर्डिंग स्टार्ट ओके गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस वंडरफुल सेशन ऑफ टैक्स कंप्लायसेस इन जोहो बुक्स वी हैव आर चेयरपर्सन श्री अनिकेत राठी सर एंड आर फैकल्टी मिस सिंधुजा संतोष एंड मिस प्रिया शिवा कुमार so before we start the session i would like you all to uh, uh, sing with us the ici motto yae shasukte shujagrati yae shasukte shujagrati I would like uh, the Ankit Rati sir to give us an addressing note. Thank you, Manchi. Uh, very good afternoon. It's indeed a pleasure to be here with you all in this virtual room. At the outset, let me first thanks to our both the faculty, uh, Sinduja Madam and then Priya Madam. Madam, thank you so much. Despite of your so much busy schedule, you accept our invitation and being agreed to share your valuable knowledge with our participants. Uh, let me also thanks to our both the coordinator, Manchi and Sital. Madam, thank you so much for your service to the fraternity. Uh, friends, today topic is all about the tax compliance in, through Joho book. I am sure that both the faculty is going to uh, added value in our day to do knowledge how we can use Joho book to do better compliance in taxes. Uh, with this, I will not take your much time because we all are here in our such a busy schedule of uh, income tax returns month. With this, I again thank you so much and wish you all happy learning. Thank you. Uh, now I would like to in introduce our today's speaker, Sinduja Ma'am. Uh, she is head of customer success at Zoho Books. Sinduja Ma'am heads customer success team uh, and ha has an expertise of 15 years in finance domain. She leads dynamic teams focused on enhancing customer experiences, driving retention, and fostering strong partner embellment. Uh, Sinduja Ma'am works closely with chartered accountants, cost accountants, and Zoho partners to help them implement Zoho finance products. Before joining Zoho, she worked as a financial analyst at Hewlett Packard and later at Standard Chartered Bank, where she primarily handled risk management and basal reporting for the UK Financial Service Authority, FCA. Sinduja Ma'am was born and raised in a remote village in South Tam of Tamil Nadu. In a family of farmers, she completed her master's in business administration and finance with a gold medal. Uh, Sinduja ma'am is happily married and a loving mother of a 10-year-old boy. Welcome ma'am to today's session. Our another uh, speaker for today is Priya ma'am. Uh, Priya ma'am leads uh, the product support at Zoho Books. She is a dedicated professional and an integral member within the finance team, where she has excelled in a range of customer and partner support roles. Believing in the importance of proactive customer engagement, Priya Ma'am helps a vital role in plays a vital role in addressing client needs with precision and care to provide tailored technical support. This approach not only resolves issues but also enhances the overall customer journey. Building strong, lasting relationship. 
Priya ma'am has represented Zoho at range of internal and external events, reflecting her commitment to integrating technology with conventional accounting policies. Uh, she has shown a strong commitment to combining technical know-how with excellent customer service. This diverse experience highlights her ability to adapt and succeed in the fast-changing business environment. Always focus on improving and satisfying the customer needs. Welcome you both and I open the session for you all to start for on the today's topic. Okay, uh, thank you, Mansi, ma'am, and uh, thank you, uh, Ankit Rati, sir. Uh, we are really honored and humbled by your presence today. And thank you, Sheetal, ma'am, and thank you very much. It's a pleasure and honor to be part of uh, WIRC WOW series once again. Uh, before we dive into today's session, let me quickly uh, summarize what we discussed in the last session. Uh, before that, let me try sharing my screen. Uh, Priya, can you try sharing your screen? I'm not able to share it. Yes, Sandra, just give me a minute. Is my screen visible? Just yes, it is visible. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, so... Yeah, before we dive into today's session, let me quickly summarize what we discussed in the last session. We hosted our previous session on introduction to Zoho Books Mastering uh, Cloud-Based Accounting Software. In that session, we have covered an overview of Zoho Books, uh, how you can configure taxes and other settings within the software, and how you'll be able to manage your receivables and payables, how you can reconcile your uh, uh, bank statement using uh, you know, a bank account with uh, your books of accounts and how you can file GST returns through Zoho Books. And we have also discussed about 70 plus report uh, generated by Zoho Books based on the transactions that you create in it. Today's topic is mastering tax compliance with Zoho Books. Yeah, so moving on to our agenda, can you move, uh, yeah. So first we will discuss on managing uh, GST filing through Zoho Books. We will explore how GST reports like GSTR 1, GSTR 2, GSTR 3B, and annual returns GSTR 9 are auto-populated based on the transactions that you create in Zoho Books. We will then discuss on the recent updates to the invoice management system, IMS. I hope, uh, as you all are aware, so the goods and service tax network is constantly streamlining its GST portal and introducing new features to simplify compliance and auditing for taxpayers. The latest is the invoice management system, which went live on 1st of October uh, this month. It aims to help signify, uh, significantly manage the process of ITC uh, claims. We'll discuss about managing that in Zoho Books. And then we will delve into generating e bills through Zoho Books and uh, understanding their various uh, statuses. Uh, further, we will see how to generate invoices from Zoho Books and push them to the IRP portal along with an overview of their statuses as well. Then we will discuss on managing uh, TDS and TCS uh, in sales and purchases transactions. Uh, further, we will discuss, uh, as you all are aware, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, MCA requirement for companies to use accounting software with an audit trial feature, which has been mandated since 1st of April 2023. So Zoho Books is compliant for audit trial as well. So we will discuss on that part. And I hope I have set the right expectation for today's session. Without further ado, let's begin. So can you, yeah. So compliance in simple terms means uh, following the rules and laws that applies to a business or organization, ensuring that everything is done correctly and ethically. I'm sure all of you are familiar with uh, GSP. Zoho is one of the GSPs uh, and we are authorized to provide a platform for businesses, accounting professionals and taxpayers to access GST portal services. So we help taxpayers comply with GST laws through our software, Zoho Books. With changing compliance regulations in India, choosing the right accounting software is essential for staying compliant. 
as zoho is a gsp we will promptly incorporate all the updates from gstn into zoho books swiftly so now i am handing over to my colleague uh, priya who will be elaborating uh, elaborate uh, today's agenda in detail thank you sindhuja Uh, so, as Sindhuja explained, Zoho is a registered uh, GST Suvida provider. Uh, so, a GST Suvida provider is any third party application which can communicate seamlessly with your uh, GST portal through APIs to secure APIs. So, we will understand uh, how Zoho being a registered GSP helps you uh, stay compliant. So, first is your GST filing. So GST filing has become inevitable for any registered business, right? So managing your monthly and quarterly returns along with your annual returns has become inevitable. So let us understand how uh, GST filing can be managed effectively in Zoho Books and how easy it is to file your GST returns. So we would be navigating through all of this. So let me quickly navigate to the product. So this is how Zoho Books would look like. To start with the GST filing, the first and foremost step is to update your tax settings. So when you just go to settings and taxes. So here you will be updating your GST settings. So GST number, the business legal name and the other details. And this online filing settings has to be updated in order to file your GST returns directly from Zoho Books. So you will have to update your GST and username, the username with which you log into the GST portal. And if you are in the monthly or quarterly returns, you can select it. If you are applicable for the QRMP scheme, just check this box. And from when would you like to uh, file the returns from Zoho Books directly? So that is the date which has to be selected here. We also have a maker and checker process in order to check if the GST filing is done correctly. And if you would like to enable an approval, you can just check this box. So once this setup is done, the GST filing module becomes active in Zoho Books. So here for whatever GST numbers you have added, the GST filing module would be available and you can view your returns from here. So here your various monthly and quarterly returns and your annual returns all of this will be listed. So uh, to give you a context, you would be creating your sales and purchase transactions here in Zoho Books, be it your sales invoices, your purchase expenses or bills, etc. So based on this data, automatically it gets updated in the corresponding month's return filing. So first, let us discuss about how you can connect your GST portal and Zoho Books. So what happens is you understand that Zoho is a GSP but there has to be some connection established between Zoho Books and the GST portal, correct? So once you log into the GST portal, you will have to enable the API access. So once the API access is enabled, then you will be able to push the transactions to the GST portal directly. So first, let us uh, look into the GSTR1 filing, which is nothing but your summary of outward supplies. So these transactions, whichever you have created, your sales transactions, basically your invoices, debit or credit notes, whichever you have created for the corresponding month gets populated automatically as per the format required by the GST portal. So whenever you're creating any invoice, you would be selecting a customer. So based on their GST treatment and the tax percent which you have applied in the transaction, all the uh, transactions are collated and it will be listed in the corresponding heads as B2B invoices, B2C large, export, etc. Any advance payments you have done, etc. Once you have checked all this information, you can go to push to GSTN option. So here again, you will find the transaction summary or HSN, nil rated summary, etc. And you can, up, you can even update the documents issued and the supply is done through e-commerce. So once you have checked and validated this data, you can simply click on push to GSTN. So once you click on push to GSTN through the connection with the API, this data will be the schedule, the push will be scheduled to the GST portal and you will be get notified here. So once the GSTR push is successful, then also you would be notified here. 
and then you can proceed with filing uh so we spoke about the make a checker process right so there could be a person who can oversee if the filing is done right or wrong so in that case if you have enabled the approval once you push the transactions to the gst portal you will be finding a submit for approval button so you can submit the transactions for approval and once the approver approves it then you can proceed to file your return tab so you can file your this return directly from zoho books itself using the electronic verification code or you can log into the gst portal and make the filing there and come back so let's assume that once you push the transactions to the gst portal all the transactions for the corresponding month gets logged so any invoices credit notes or debit notes which you have pushed through will be logged you will not be able to make any changes now just in case you check some invoices and you identify some errors there which has to be updated so since the push is already done system will restrict you right so in order to edit the invoices you can simply use this reset push option so when you are resetting the push automatically the data which was pushed to the gst portal will be reversed and the data updated in the gst portal and would be deleted so this transactions will also be unlocked you can make the necessary changes and initiate the push again how simple right within some few clicks you can complete your gstr filing directly from zoho books so in case of any failed transaction so let's say that your uh, suppliers or your uh, customers gst number is inactive in the current period for some reasons so in that case the gst number is invalid so if you have created it as a b2b transaction then uh, you will get it as a failed transaction here so you can just view this make the corrections and initiate a push again so once the data is successfully pushed you can navigate to file your return tab so here it will ask you to generate the otp the otp will be sent to your gst registered mobile number you can simply generate the otp once you validate it you can file the return directly from zoho books or if you are filing the return in the portal you can simply come here and click it. select on mark as filed So this is all about your GSTR one, that is your outward supplies. So next, let's move on to your GSTR two. So the next step is your GSTR two reconciliation, which will be periodically generated in the portal based on your supplier's GSTR one filing. So your summary of your inward supplies will be listed here based on the transactions you create. Again, here it it gets uh, put into different modules like B two B invoices, credit notes, of unregistered. or registered vendors etc based on the gst treatment and the tax percentage chosen in the transaction so this is basically a reconciliation so what it does is it compares the transaction which is filed by your supplier and the transactions which you have created in the zoho books that is your accounting application so for that you need to pull the data from the gst portal so when you hit pull from gst and again it will ask for the otp you can just validate it and once the otp is validated it will pull the data from gstn and the system smartly recognizes and is and helps you easing out the entire reconciliation process so it will automatically display the transactions between these four tabs so the basis on which uh, the comparison points here would be the vendor's gst and your supplier's gst number the transaction number which is basically the bill number the expense number the transaction date and also the entire total value of the transaction and also the tax amount if all of this perfectly matches so the the all these five conditions perfectly match with the transactions in zoho books and gst portal it will be listed as a match transaction if there is a minor mismatch in the amount or any of these details then it would be under the partially matched tab so you can either choose to accept the gst portal values or the zoho books values and move it to the reconcile tab missing in zoho books means the transactions are available in the gst portal but it is not yet created in zoho books so you can create those transactions and match them and sometimes it might be missing in gstn because your vendor might be in a quarterly filing and you might be reconciling it monthly so in these cases you can uh, simply leave uh, ignore these transactions and it will be automatically moved to the next month 
So once all the transactions are moved to the reconcile tab, you can mark it as reconciled. So this is all about your GSTR 2A reconciliation. So to claiming of uh, to claim your ITC, GSTR 2B uh, is an auto drafted ITC statement based on which you claim the ITC, right? So you can reconcile your GSTR 2B as well. So here uh, the overall summary will be basically uh, divided based on the ITC. So what are the transactions for which ITC is available and for what transactions ITC is not available. So here the reconciliation process becomes pretty similar to that of what we discussed in GSTR 2A. So here also you will be pulling the data from GSTN and the system smartly recognizes based on the uh, CUN parameters and it will uh, display it across these four tabs. So you can select them and you can mark it as reconciled. So now that we have filed our GSTR1, we have reconciled our GSTR2 and GSTR2B as well. The next filing is the GSTR3B. So the GSTR3B summary can be viewed uh, here. And also there's something called view RCM opening balance, which was recently introduced by the GST portal. So you're supposed to update your RCM liabilities or the RCM ITCs, which are not yet claimed. This opening balance has to be updated on or before 31st of October. So this tab will help you calculate the RCM opening balance by fetching the details from the portal. And for the corresponding month, you can view the summary for GSTR3B. Here, the data is segregated among the various tables, like your uh, details of your outward and inward supplies, which are liable for reverse charge, and also uh, table 3.1.1, so where the e-commerce related entries are posted, and also your eligible ITC. So in case of any adjustment or ITC reversal, you can use these options to update the values. All these datas are autumn dynamically populated based on the transactions you create, so once you've checked and run through all the entries, you can again click push to GSTN. So once the push is initiated, you can check the status to know if the push is successful or not. And once the data push is successful, you can go to the GST portal, make the tax payment, offset it with your ITC and make the tax payment and do the complete the filing. Now filing is done in the GST portal. So how do you notify Zoho Box that the so, uh, filing is already completed for this period. So once the filing is completed in the GST portal, you can just come back to Zoho Books and you can go to GST payment. So whatever payment you have done, you can just record it here. So it is a uh, pretty simple, like it is generated in the form of Chalan itself. So you can use this Chalan and you can enter the tax liabilities, the interest or late fees, if any, and you can record the GST payment. Once this is done, you can mark the return as filed. You can also uh, file the return directly from Soho Books uh, from the Windows application. So once you're marking the GSTR 3B as filed, to offset your tax liabilities, a journal will be fetched from the portal and directly created into Soho Books. Uh, so now we discussed about the various monthly or quarterly returns and the reconciliation which you do. Now let's discuss about the annual return which you file, which is nothing but your GSTR-9. So GSTR-9 is the annual return which you file for the period. So here you can uh, generate the return. So this generation of return depends on the transactions you have created. And there are various tables which is being displayed as per the GSTR-9 format. So this is this table is displayed based on the transactions created in Zoho Box. So the next step is to fetch an update. So you can fetch the auto calculated summary directly from the GST portal. So this will give you an idea if the transactions which are available here and the transactions values which are available in GST portal are in sync. In case of any mismatches, you can choose to edit them and then you can push it again to the GST portal. So this will also simplify the process of your GSTR 9 filing. So you can simply push this to the GST portal. And once the return filing is completed, you can file the return. You can uh, mark the return as filed in Zoho Books as well. 
How simple, right? You can just manage all of this within a few clicks. So it does not require that you should collate the data individually, go to the portal, and then you need to uh, generate the JSON and file it. You can simply do all of this within Zoho Books itself. Uh, so recently, there was an uh, invoice management system which was introduced by the GST portal, wherein the buyer can verify the supplier's transactions itself and choose to accept or reject and claim ITC. Uh, so this is also introduced in Zoho Books. So Zoho being a GST compliant accounting application, we uh, incorporate all the updates which is given by the GST portal then and there. So this IMS dashboard is also currently available within Zoho Books itself. So you can verify the transactions using this. You can pull the data from GST in, and you can review the transactions. So once you have reviewed all the entries, you can push it back to the GST portal and you can proceed to the ITC claiming. So now we understood how you can file your GST returns directly from Zoho Books, right? So we also offer a wide range of reports for uh, regarding regulated your tax. So Zoho Books offers around 75 plus insightful reports to you know uh, check the business, uh, how your business is performing and details related to it. And in the taxes section, we have a lot of other reports as well. So we have the tax summary report wherein you will be able to check the various tax percentages used and the corresponding transactions. And we also offer the GSTR-1, the GSTR-3B reports, which can be exported as JSON and filed in the portal also. Uh, so to avoid any last minute rush, if you want to file the return directly in the portal, yes, very well, you can do it. You can use a summary of outward supplies report. It is readily available in the JSON format. You can just export this report and complete your filing in the portal. We also offer the summary of invert supplies, which is nothing but your GSTR2 report and also the GSTR3B summary, which we discussed right now. And uh, so if you are applicable, if you come under the QRMP scheme, then for the first two months of the quarter, you might not be filing the GST returns, but you will be furnishing the IFF, right? So this IFF is also readily available as a report. It can be exported as JSON and furnished in the portal. And you can also view your tax liability using this PMT-06 report. So this report is on self-assessment basis. So this will give you an idea of your total tax liability for the corresponding month based on which you can make the payment. And uh, we also uh, we also give the report on your GSTR-9, that is your annual summary. So this, you can view the summary and you can regenerate it as well. Uh, so let me give you a quick recap of what we discussed until now. So we understood about how you can manage your GST filing within Zoho Books. Uh, so the first and foremost step for, was uh, to come achieve that was to update your tax settings in the GST uh, in Zoho Books. Then you will have to connect Zoho Books with the GST portal. So you are enabling the API access. Then we understood how you can file your GST returns in simple two or three clicks from within the application. So you can file your GSTR 1, 3B, and 9 returns. And you can also reconcile your GSTR 2 and 2B. And we have also incorporated the recently introduced invoice management system also using the IMS dashboard. You can review your uh, transactions and you can claim your ITC accordingly. Finally, we just checked out the various reports which are available for the uh, taxation part, which can be exported and it can be used for filing directly in the portal. So next, let's move on to generation of eBay bills. So if you are into transport, if you are into goods related uh, business, or if you are transporting goods from one place to another, eBay bills are mandatory. So Zoho being a GSP simplifies the process of that also. So you need not uh, generate the invoice or a credit or a debit note, a delivery chalan or a, a debit note here. Go back to the eBay bill portal and generate it and manually update it here, not required. All of these steps can be done within the product itself. So for that, we need to again connect your eBay portal and your Zoho books, right? 
So for that, what you will do is, so you, you will already have a login credential with your eWable portal. So just log in to your eWable portal. And once the login is done, you will be able to uh, go to the registration pane. So in the registration pane, you can add Zoho Corporation as your GSP. So when you're adding Zoho Corporation as your GSP, it will ask you to update one more uh, credentials. So this, this is not the login credentials of your eWable portal, but this is the GSP credentials. So you can select this GSP credentials and you can update, uh, update it and save it. So Zoho Corporation will be added as a GSP to your eWable portal. Then you can directly generate the eWables from Zoho Books. So let me show you how. So once you have added Zoho Corporation as your GSP, you will have to update it in Zoho Books as well. So since I have already connected it, it shows as reconfigure. If you're yet to connect it, it will just show connect. So here, once you connect it, it will ask you for the, the GST number is automatically populated. The username and the password is given. So this username and password is nothing but the username and password which you create when you have added Zoho Corporation as your GSP, not the login credentials. So you can just update it and you can validate. Once this is done, an eWable module will be available here using which you can directly create the eWables. So here uh, you can just select the particular branch or the trans. So there are various filters available here for the transaction types. So these are some invoices which are already created and which is above 50,000, but the, but the eWable is not yet generated. So I can just click on this, verify all the details. So basically all the document information required for generation of eWables will be populated. And um, the main details here is the dispatch bill from bill to and the ship to addresses and the place of delivery. Once all of this is updated, you need to update the transporter details also. So the transporter details and the distance uh, has to be updated. These are mandatory. And the part B information can be ignored. So if you if your transport, it can, it can be updated either by your transporter or yourself. So if you're not aware of the information, you can skip this and you can click on save and generate. Once you click on save and generate, the eWay bill will be directly generated from the Zoho Books end itself. So in certain cases, you might uh, create eWay bills even if the transactions are less than 50,000, right? In certain cases, eWay bill is applicable in those cases. So when the invoice is not listed there, you know worries, you can just go to the particular transaction and click on this more dropdown. So here we have this option of adding your eWay bill details. So just click on it. Here you can either add, you can create a new eWay bill directly from the Zoho Books itself, or you can associate the eWay bill number. So if you have already generated the eWable in the portal, you can associate that just the number here, or you can directly choose to create the eWable. So all these entries are, all these data is populated based on the uh, transaction details itself. And you can enter the transported details distance and you can save and generate. So once the eWable is generated, we have also given an option to print the eWable also directly from the system. Or if you want to generate uh, eWable in bulk from the portal only, you can just select the invoices and export the JSON. So this JSON can be uploaded in the eWable portal and you can generate the eWables directly from the portal itself. So we understood how easy uh, you can easily you can generate the eWable required for the transportation of goods. So you just need to update Zoho Corporation as your GST Suvida provider and get the API credentials. Once you get the API credentials, you can update it in Zoho Books, and then you can either choose to generate directly the eWable from the portal by exporting the JSON file, or you can generate it directly using Zoho Books. So this is how the eWable module looks like. And there are various statuses of this eWable. So we just saw the not generated status. So not generated status means, so you have created the transaction, but the eWable is not yet generated. Generated means the eWable for the particular transaction is successfully generated. And the eWable number is associated to the corresponding transaction. Cancelled is you have generated the eWable, 
but you have cancelled it for some reason. So that will also be available. Expired. So e-payable has a certain kind of a validity after which it does expire, right? So those expired, e so uh, e-payables with the expired status means you have generated the e-payable, but the validity of the e-payable has expired. And finally, is excluded. In certain cases, uh, we do not generate e-payables even if it is uh, even if the value of the goods transported is greater than fifty thousand. So in those cases, you can just find the excluded option. Uh, so next, let's move on to one interesting topic, e-invoicing. Uh, so you might be aware of uh, e-invoicing. So e-invoicing is basically an electronic invoice wherein the government portal validates the transaction then and there when it is being created. So there is an IRP portal individually dedicated to it. So the invoice or the transaction you create gets validated and the government sends it back with some additional information and digital validation. So e-invoicing was first introduced in the year 2020 for uh, businesses with a revenue of 500 crores and right now it is applicable for businesses with a turnover of 5 crore and above. So uh, Zoho Books as uh, being a GST compliant application, we also introduced this feature in 2020 itself. So when the e-invoicing became mandatory for businesses with a revenue of 500 crores or above, Zoho Books was already e-invoicing compliant and we were able to generate and we were ready with the e-invoice generation from the product. So uh, let me quickly show you how you can do it. Uh, so yeah, before that, so for which transactions is this invoicing applicable? So for your B2B transactions and your overseas transactions, along with your credit notes and debit notes, e-invoice has to be generated. So now let us uh, delve into how you can generate e-invoice from Zoho So the general process or the generally the traditional method of doing it is, so you have an accounting application or an I, uh, IR, ERP, so where you will generate your sales invoices, credit notes, debit notes, etc. So these transactions will be generated after which you will be exporting these details. Uh, you can log into the IRP portal and you can then upload the data, get it digitally verified by the government, come back and update it in your accounting application. So to, uh, you know, cut short of all these steps, multiple navigations, and, and to cut down this tedious process, we have introduced this e-invoicing can be handled from within the product itself. So the first and foremost step is to register with your IRP portal. So you have a GST portal, likewise you have an IRP portal also. So once your business turnover has crossed five crores, uh, easily you can register and you can register it in the IRP portal. So just your GST number registration is required. So once you register, you will get a login credential. And once the login credentials are, uh, once you receive the login credentials, then you need to connect your GS, uh, IRP portal and your Zoho books. So to establish these connections, again, like how we did it for e bills only, if you are already using Zoho books for your e bill generation, then this step can be skipped. So because automatically when you enable the invoicing, it would be connected. If you're not using Zoho books for e bill generation, then you will have to add Zoho Corporation as your GSP in the IRP portal. So let me quickly show you how you can do it. Uh, so the first and foremost step to start with e invoicing is you need to enable the e invoicing. You can navigate to settings and there under the e invoicing tab, you will find e invoicing. So there you can enable since it is already enabled so here, there are two different GST numbers, which is already connected. So since I've already connected the e uh, portal with Zoho Books, this is also connected with, uh, the IRP portal is also already connected. So now what happens is, as and when you create a transaction in Zoho Books, it gets validated. So let's assume that you have created a transaction in Zoho Books. So this is a B2B customer. You have updated all the details. You have selected the customer, their GST treatment, the GST number, place of supply, et cetera. And you have also updated the uh, item details which are going to sell out to the customer. So once all the details are entered, you can simply save it. Now you will be prompted to push it to the e-invoicing portal for B2B and overseas transactions and the push to IRP button is available here. So just click on push to IRP and you can choose to push only your invoice details 
or both your invoice as well as your e-waiver details. So once you click on push invoice, the details which you sent would be validated by the government. So the details of your supplier, details of the supplier, the details of the buyer, and also the item and the HSN code, all of this would be validated. And if there are no errors successfully, an IRN and a QR will be generated. So this is the information which is given back to us by the IRP portal. So we get a digitally uh, digital QR code an IRN, which is generated based on your transaction number and an acknowledgement number and an acknowledgement date. Uh, so this invoice is now validated by the government and it, now it can be sent across to your customer. How simple, right? Within a single click, you have generated an e-invoice from Zoho Books itself. So what happens here is once you push the e-invoice to the IRP portal, it gets successfully pushed and the data is stored in the IRP portal. And later it gets moved to, it gets pushed to the GST portal based on which your one summary gets populated. So uh, now let us assume that you have pushed the e invoice, but later you realize that there are certain uh, entry mistakes which you'll have to edit. Say for instance, the GST number of the uh, buyer is incorrect. So in those cases, can you edit these transactions? Uh, so as per the IRP portal, you will not be able to edit them. So you can cancel them and create a new invoice. So cancellation is also pretty simple here. If it is within 24 hours of generation, so in your acknowledgement date, the time and date in which this invoice is generated will be available. So if it is within 24 hours from the generation, you can simply cancel the e invoice. So canceling the e invoice here, so you can just mention the reason. And you can cancel the e invoice. So once you cancel the e invoice, it becomes void and this entry, this particular IRN is removed from your IRP portal as well. So the transaction, the transaction which you have created now becomes invalid. It just stays in your system as a voided transaction. And then you can create a new transaction and push it across to the uh, portal again. And now uh, if you want to update any non-mandatory information in your uh, invoice, like say for instance, you have these customer notes or say any other information like your order number, et cetera. So can you edit these non-mandatory information? Yes, very well. So whenever you are um, updating the invoicing, so you can enable the editing option for the optional fields. So you can just enable this. So this will allow you to edit certain non-mandatory fields in your transactions, even though the e-invoicing has been pushed. And uh, you can push e-invoices in bulk. So it is not necessary that uh, if you're generating invoices uh, on in a, in a huge volume, so it might not be possible for you to push each invoice, right? So you can just go to this view wherein we have given custom views to check which is pushed for e-invoicing. So the transactions for which e-invoice uh, e and IRN is successfully generated. And also we have given an option to view the yet to be pushed transactions. So here you can check out the transactions which are yet to be pushed. You can select them at once and you can push them to the GST, uh, push them to the IRP portal. And in case of any failures, that will also be listed. You can just check on the failure reasons. The failure reasons will also be mentioned here itself. Once you may uh, rectify these errors, the transaction can be successfully pushed into the IRP portal. So now let us assume that you have already generated the e-invoice in the portal itself. So now how do I update it here in Zoho Books? So in those cases also, you can update it directly. You can use the add. Uh, so let's assume, let me quickly clone an invoice and show you. So this. So for this particular invoice, I have already generated my e-invoice in the portal itself. So now how do I add the details? So I can simply click on it and click on associate IRN details. So here the IRN number, the acknowledgement number, the date and the time can be automatically added based on which the IRN details would be populated at the uh, footer section. So in addition to this, uh, we also 
have given you options while you are importing. So if you are migrating from your existing system into Zoho Books, then you might be migrating all your transactions, right? So in your older transactions, if you have already generated e invoices and you want to import it, we have given this bulk import option. So here you can import the e invoices. So when you click next, so there is a field corresponding to the e invoice itself. So these data can be updated in your Excel format, the data dump, and then automatically the e invoicing details along with the transactions will be pulled into the system. Uh, so now you have generated e invoices and everything is working fine. So what has happened is, uh, so after 24 hours, you have identified a mistake and you have uh, asked your user to cancel the e invoice. So what has happened is, uh, let me show you. So you have successfully pushed one invoice to the GST portal. So this particular invoice has been pushed to the GST portal on uh, eighth month, but later you have identified that there is an error. So in that case, you can simply mark it as canceled. So you can mention the reason and you can mark it as canceled. And you can also uh, manually remove this IRN whenever you're do doing your GSTR one filing. Now, uh, if you have canceled any invoices, any e-invoice by mistake, so for example, um, now you have pushed this e-invoice. So I, I was supposed to cancel the e-invoice generated on 14th, but by mistake, since due to the same customer and the same value, my user has canceled the invoice which was generated on the other date. But this is actually, but this is actually a valid transaction. So what will happen in this case? So I have just marked as cancelled by mistake. Instead of cancelling the transaction or uh, one six, the invoice number one six, I have cancelled the invoice two zero. But this is a valid invoice, and this IRP is valid and it's available in my GST portal. So what do I do right now? So in those cases, for invoices which are marked as cancelled by mistake, we have also given you a recall option. So you can simply recall the transaction and again, the e invoice and the IRN becomes valid. So this will be again associated with your transactions. Uh, so we understood about how easily e-invoices can be generated from Zoho Books. So as in when you create a transaction or even you can bulk upload it and certain other various specific actions related to e-invoice. So this is how an yet to be pushed invoice looks like and a pushed invoice and the IRN details are populated in the footer section of your invoice. And we also understood about the various e-invoices statuses such as uh, yet to be pushed. So the transactions which are generated but are yet to be pushed into the portal and the transactions which are successfully pushed. And if you are bulk pushing the transactions into the invoicing portal, it will show as push initiated. And canceled is basically the invoices which you have canceled uh, within 24 hours. Mark as canceled is the invoices which you have canceled after 24 hours. And due to certain reasons or errors, if the uh, invoice has failed, then it will be marked as failed. And also we uh, understood about the certain other actions which are available. That is, you can edit the non-mandatory fields, like you can edit the order number or the project number, etc. And you can also recall the wrongly cancelled, mark as cancelled uh, invoices. Uh, so next, let's move on to TDS and TCS. I'm, uh, um, I assume that most of you here might be aware and you would be able to explain much better about what TDS and TCS is. Uh, so ju just let me quickly run through what TDS and TCS is and then let me explain how you can manage this in Zoho Books. Uh, so TDS is again tax deducted at source where the tax is deducted by the buyer itself and later furnished in their, ITC, uh, in their income tax return. Uh, whereas uh, TCS is the tax collected at source, so the seller collects this tax and furnishes it to the uh, government. So there are different uh, action points, the nature of transactions and limits. So let us see how all of this can be managed in Zoho Books. Uh, 
Uh, so in Zoho Books, we uh, in the last session, I believe we saw how you can create all the transactions and a detailed walkthrough of all that. So now let me quickly show how TDS and TCS can be applied when you're creating a sales transaction. So uh, when you create any transaction in sales, that is your invoice or a quote or a sales order, you can enter all the relevant details of your client. And then you can apply your TDS or TCS percentage. So there are two radio buttons given in the bottom of the screen. So your TDS or TCS is, is up, if based on the applicability, you can choose it. So if you select TDS, we already have a specific set of tax percentages available here. And if you want to create any of a new TDS tax percentage, yes, you can use this manage TDS option. So here you can create a new TDS tax, enter the tax name, the percentage of tax which is applicable and also the TDS section. So if the section which you're looking for is not available, you can use others. Once it is done, you can also choose the account tracking. So based on which account uh, the TDS payable and the TDS receivable has to be tracked. And if it is a higher rate TDS, you can check this option. And there's something called applicable period here. So if your TDS percentage is applicable only for a specific period of time, that is within a date range, you can just enter the start date and end date. So the tax rate, whatever you have created here will be applicable only within this specific period post which it expires and you will not be able to apply to any other transactions. So once you select the TDS percentage, it will be applied and you can save. Automatically based on the account chosen, it will be uh, listed in your corresponding transaction. So once this invoice is created and marked it as sent, uh, so the journal entry will be posted and the corresponding TDS account will be hit. So this is when, uh, so this TDS you can apply when you know how much TDS your customer is going to detect. Let's assume that you're not sure how much TDS your customer is going to detect and only during the payment, whenever you receive the payment from your client, you understand this is the TDS deducted. So in those cases, how do I handle it? No worries, we have got you covered. So you have, might have already recorded the transaction wherein TDS will not be applied here. But when you're recording the payment for the particular entry for the invoice, so here you can apply it. So if the tax is deducted during the payment collection also, you can just apply it. You can give it as yes, TDS income tax. You can select your TDS account and you can enter how much amount of uh, TDS is being withheld by the customer. So this amount will be automatically excluded from the amount received and it will be added in the TDS account. So this is not just pertaining to uh, your sales transactions. Even for your purchase transactions, uh, TDS can be applied. It is similar to that of a sales transaction only. So here also we have given a TDS radio button. So you can select the TDS uh, percentage which is applicable, which you're going to detect from your vendor and you can apply it. So now uh, in order to view the TDS uh, you have detected in over a period of time, we have again given you reports. So to that, go to the tax reports here in Zoho Books. So here you will be able to find the TDS summary report. So TDS summary report is uh, basically the report which is available for uh, the taxes which you have deducted for your vendors. So if there are any taxes which you have deducted in your purchase bills, in those cases, it would be listed here. You can choose to display it based on TDS section or by the vendor name as well. And this report can be exported and used up for your filing. Similarly, for your uh, TDS receivables also, the tax which is deducted by your customer, we have the TDS receivables report. So again, the, here you can choose to display it based on the TDS section or based on your customer. So this you can use it for your TDS. Uh, you can uh, reconcile it with your TDS uh, filing. Uh, so just like how you can apply T TDS, you can apply TCS also when, as and when you create a transaction. So uh, 
TCS is applicable whenever you're creating transactions above or whenever you're crossing the 50 lakh limit, right? So let's assume that for this particular customer, I'm just entering an invoice which is above 50 lakh. So as and when I try to save it, it, I will be prompted to apply a TDS since the total sale value of this customer has exceeded 50 lakh in my current uh, financial year. So it will, the system prompts me to collect TDS. So you can, even though if you have not missed it, uh, you can just click on apply TCS. You can go to the radio button here. So here you can see that TDS will be applied on the subtotal of your invoice value, whereas TCS will be applied on the total invoice value, including your GST and your adjustments. So again, here the tax uh, creation of TCS remains very simple as we discussed TDS. So you can just create the new TCS tax name, enter the percentage and also enter the nature of collection. You can also choose your respective uh, TCS payable and your TCS receivable account for this particular tax date. And again, you can choose an applicable period. So if there's any period up to which only this particular TCS percentage is applicable, you can enter the start date and end date. Otherwise you can just skip this. So once you have applied the TCS, the corresponding uh, TCS account will get impacted. Likewise, for your uh, purchase bills as well. So this is corresponding to your sales transaction. So uh, to in your purchase transactions also, the TCS can be applied and it will also be applied on the total value of your bill. Uh, we also have reports for the TCS values which you have collected. Again, under taxes, you have the TCS summary that is form 27 EQ report. So this report can be viewed and uh, you will be able to view the, uh, view the TCS which you have collected in the particular period. So this report is run on cash basis by default. You can either choose it on accrual or cash basis. Uh, so we understood about how you can manage your TDS and your TCS effectively within the product. So we understood how you can uh, deduct TDS or TCS in a sales or a purchase transaction. And in case if you're not aware how much TDS my customer might deduct during the transaction creation, we also saw how you can manage your TDS when you're recording your payments for the invoices. And we also saw how you can create new TDS and TCS tax rates in addition to the ones available in Zoho Books. Finally, the reports which give you an overall summary of the TDS or TCS collected or detected over a period of time and help you with the filing. Uh, so next, the most important feature we'll discuss here is the audit trial. So as per the MCA, so audit trial was mandated uh, in the year 2023 only, but even before that in Zoho Books, we had a report called activity logs, wherein the entire activity would be managed. So let me quickly show you. Uh, so in your Zoho books, you might have multiple users who will be using this organization, right? And various actions would be performed. So to track all of the activities of various users, we have a report called activity logs and audit trial. So this audit trial was mandated by the MCA that uh, every accounting application you use should contain the audit trial of the entries. So even before it was mandated, so we had uh, this activity log report wherein each and every user's activity would be updated here in the system. So here you can see any uh, the recent transactions which I updated, all of this is done by me and all of these entries are recorded in the activity logs. And whenever a transaction has been updated or edited, then the audit trial is, can also be viewed for the particular entry. So you can just click on view audit trial and you can compare two different versions and you can check what are the different changes it has been done. So what has been modified or what has been newly added or what has been removed, etc. So this will give you an uh, overall idea of how you can um, view the transactions which have been altered or in other words, it will give you the entire uh, activities which has taken place in your organization. 
so this is not just pertaining to transaction all the entries which you create here in zoho books will be available uh, the entire activity of the various users would be available here in this activity logs and the audit trial report uh so we uh, right now we discussed about the compliances which are available in the gst uh, portal end and uh, audit trial etc and we also talked about the tds and tcs so what are the compliances do we have so the uh, zo is uh, compliant yeah we have one question so yes. if we can show it live uh, before we move on to other compliances we can do that so how sure. do we see and reconcile rcm so uh, okay we can talk about uh, rcm and how it is handled in zoho books before we move on to other compliances okay okay so uh, i believe you're talking about rcm in your purchase transactions correct uh so uh, in zoho so yeah we can go ahead and share it uh yes is my screen visible now yes okay thank you so as and when you create any entries in zoho books automatically the details get populated based on the gst treatment of your vendor so for example if i'm trying to create a, a invoice for an unregistered vendor in that case So here, if my transaction is applicable for reverse charge, I can simply enter it. So I just need to check this box that this transaction is applicable for reverse charge. And once you click on it, the tax field becomes active. So you can apply the tax percentage, which is available, which is applicable for this particular entry and save it. automatically your self invoice gets generated and your reverse charge summary will be displayed about the invoice itself again this can be viewed in your uh, self invoice summary report on zoho books so here it is automatically tracked under the reverse charge tax input but not due account so this will also be reflected in your self invoice summary so when you go to reports under taxes uh, we have certain reports right we discussed earlier so there we have the self invoice summary so here the self invoice summary for this particular transaction will be available okay i hope uh, uh, priya answered your question if you have if you still have any question on that you can uh very well uh, raise and there is one more question how do we manage tds on salaries okay so uh if you are using uh, zoho books only to manage your salary so we also have an application called zoho payroll okay. wherein we will be able to manage your employee salaries effectively so there uh, the various deductions like your professional taxes your tds all of this can be managed so other than that you can use that and you can integrate it with zoho books so the accounting entry is taken care here and the parents and the other deductions are taken care in the payroll yeah just to add uh, zoho uh, with another company also we use uh, zoho payroll to manage employee salaries so from small to medium to large enterprises anyone can use a uh, uh, zoho payroll to manage the complete uh, uh, payroll management can be done using uh, zoho payroll so the best way to manage tds on salaries is to do that in a uh, zoho payroll which is again pre integrated with zoho books yeah so if you want to show something about zoho books on managing tds please go ahead please. okay so uh, just in case if you're using only zoho books as of now since you're just starting with in those cases you can either uh, you can use bills or expenses in order to record it so if you're using the bills module in order to record your salary entries you can directly use tds option here so here you can create a tax percentage for your uh, employee salary deduction so here we have the various tax percentage so for salary section 192 is also available you can enter the tax name the applicable percentage and save it 
So when you're creating your employee uh, salary as a bill, you can simply apply the corresponding TDS and have it checked. So this will be available in your TDS summary report as well. Uh, so any other questions? If you have any more questions, please feel free to post to that on Q and A. We will uh, answer that. So we will we will take a pass and we'll take up the Q and A before we move on to other compliances at Soho. Okay, so, so we will get back to the Q&A after we complete the other compliances. I think mm -hmm. uh, no questions so far. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll move on there. Okay. Uh, so let's have a quick run through of what other uh, compliances does Zoho uh, have. So we ensure that we provide end-to-end -end compliance. Uh, so we have, have to share your screen. I think we are still at Zoho book screen. Uh, sorry, Sindhacha. Thank you. Yes. Is my screen visible now? Yes. Okay. So not just uh, the GST compliant, we're not just a GST compliant application. We are one, we are also a GST compliant application. So in, in addition to it, we have various other compliances. Zoho Books is not just limited to India. We have 14 different editions uh, spread across the globe. So we have an Indian edition uh, which complies with the GST tax norms. Whereas we have other editions of Zoho books as well, and we're in uh, for different editions like UK, Germany, etc. And we have a UAE edition to cater with uh, the UAE countries. We have a Kenyan edition, Australian edition, uh, Canada, USA, and Mexico. So all of these editions will comply to the local tax norms, and uh, the taxation part in that particular organization would be designed accordingly. And uh, not just that, we are also HMRC uh, and MTD compliant. And as we discussed, we are a GS registered GST Suida provider and an invoicing provider. And we are also ZATCA approved and FTA accredited solutions. So uh, if you have, uh, before we uh, get into re recap, can you go back to the previous slide, Dav? Yeah. yeah. So uh, let us say you have clients uh, uh, using an accounting software from multiple countries, then uh, it would be uh, that you would get benefited because you can use Zoho Books and manage uh, multiple editions of uh, uh, you know Zoho Books within uh, one single accounting software itself. In addition to that, um, we also have global uh, edition. Let us say uh, uh, you have uh, clients from. Uh, Southeast Asia or some other countries which we don't have a specific edition, um, you can ask your clients to create uh, uh, and start using global edition where we can configure the taxes and start using the product as such. So the only difference between uh, the editions that we have in, uh, in the, and the global edition is uh, the tax configurations and the uh, tax filing part will be taken care of by Zoho Books automatically if we have an edition. So for all other uh, uh, countries, you can configure the taxes and uh, the report will be generated. You can export the report and do the filings and other things directly in the government portal. So that is the major difference. And we have uh, one question. So uh, in case a new client wants to have Zoho structure into their system, do we provide initial hand-holding support to them? Of course. So... Uh, let us say, right from the evaluation stage itself, we have a separate team. Let us say a client is evaluating Zoho Books directly. So we have a pre-sales team who will uh, be giving them a demo. So we are uh, currently uh, providing demo in uh, all the, I mean, most of the popular languages in India, right from English uh, to Tamil to Hindi to Malayalam, Telugu, Kannada, Gujarati, Bengali. So we almost support uh, most of the popular languages in India. So we would be, uh, we have recorded webinars uh, of a product available in YouTube channel. We have Zoho Books exclusive channel as well, where we post all the uh, uh, product related updates as videos in our channel. So a client can get to know from the YouTube channel and they can request for a demo to our pre-sales team and they'll be giving handholding. In addition to that, we also provide onboarding services to all uh, 
uh, the prospects who are evaluating Zoho Books. So if a customer is evaluating, uh, they can get onboarding support from us. And uh, we have uh, we provide uh, support via various modes like chat support, email support, as well as call support. So if uh, at any point of time, if a customer is having any uh, questions, clarifications, whatever it is, they can reach out to the toll-free number directly. And as I mentioned, we are providing multilingual support. You can reach out to the toll-free and the support team will be able to assist all the queries. So in addition to that, if any of you wants to become a, a Zoho partner, who already you are, if you have already clients and you want to uh, move them to Zoho Books, you can very well reach out to our email address. My, I will uh, uh, be sharing my email address. You can reach out to us and we would be arranging a call from our side to become a partner and uh, we will take it forward from that. So if you are becoming a partner, obviously we will be training you with all the products in depth so that you can onboard and implement uh, uh, Zoho Books and other Zoho products to your clients as well. I hope I answered your questions. If you still have any questions, uh, we would be happy to uh, take that. And the next question is on how do we manage branches in Zoho Books as we have branches in India and outside India, example in Dubai. Okay, so if you have, um, we do support branching uh, functionality uh, inside Zoho Books. Uh, uh, you know, if you have multiple branches or multiple GSTN within India, uh, we will, Priya will show you live on how to manage that. But if you have branches in India and outside India, let us say Dubai in that case, you would have to subscribe to different, two different organizations. Uh, because in India, we follow uh, GST, right? So in that case, you would have to create one Indian edition organization in Zoho Books. The other one is uh, Dubai edition organization. However, if you want to have a consolidated report between uh, Zoho Books India edition and Zoho Books Dubai edition, so we have our business intelligence tool called Zoho Analytics. So Zoho Books is integrated with Zoho Analytics. So with the help of books and analytics integration, you will be able to take up consolidated report for uh, your branches within India and outside India. And uh, Priya can show the uh, branching thing live. Uh, and the uh, recording will be uh, posted in uh, WIRC YouTube channel. So you can uh, uh, watch our previous uh, videos as well from WIRC. YouTube channel and this uh, video will also be posted, I guess. Yeah. So regarding how you can manage your multiple GSTN and branches, uh, we will now show you live. Yeah. So let me quickly show you how you can manage uh, your branches if you have any branches within India for different GSTNs or even for same GSTN. So under settings and taxes, you must have added all of your GST numbers here. So once it is updated, if you have multiple franchises, be it for the same GST number or for different GST number, you can create branches. So just navigate to the branches. So here you can see that uh, there are two different GSTNs, but I've created three different branches. So there is one branch for Uttarakhand and there are two, uh, GS, uh, two uh, branches for the same GST number. This can also be done. So once the branch is created, a corresponding uh, a corresponding GST number and the transaction number series specific to that particular branch will be associated. So now, as and when you create any transaction in Zoho Books, be it an invoice, an expense, anything, so the branch field will be enabled by default. So here you will have to select which branch you're creating this transaction pertaining to. And in that particular branch, the accounting, the entry would be posted. And finally, if you want to view your reports or if you want to compare reports based on branches, yes, it is very much possible. For instance, if you want to uh, compare your profit and loss based on your uh, branches, you can just use go to profit and loss, use this compare with option, and you can compare it based on your branches. So you can select the different branches which you want to, and you can just say apply. So this will give you an overall view of uh, how your branches perform and you can manage your operations accordingly. So any more questions? Yeah, if you have any, any questions, uh, we are happy to take. Uh, so for now, let us proceed with uh, the quick recap and then we'll take up, we'll continue taking up all your questions. Please feel yeah. free to post that on the Q&A session. 
we will give a quick recap on what we discussed and then uh, we will uh, elaborate on uh, what we discussed now and then we'll take up your okay. uh, so let me give you a, a quick recap on what we discussed so far so first uh, sanjay explained what compliance is all about and uh, how zoho is a registered gsp so a gsp is nothing but a third party service provider which can which can communicate effectively with a gst portal and there could be multiple uh, usages regarding it so it can facilitate your gst filing etc so zoho is one of the gsps available in the market and uh, we saw how you can manage your gst filing within zoho books so how easy it is so you will be creating transactions in your accounting application at the end of the month or quarter you need not collate all the entries prepare it in the format and file it in the portal absolutely not required so we are dynamically updating all your gst reports based on your based on the transactions which you create in zoho books and you can just finish your gst filing within a few clicks so you can file your gstr1 you can file your gstr 3b and gstr 9 as well and you can also manage your gstr 2 and 2b reconciliations we have also incorporated the invoice management system which is recently introduced by the government and then moving on we discussed about how you can generate e waivers directly using zoho books so if you are into goods if you are into supply of goods then e waiver generation becomes mandatory it of uh, becomes a part of uh, of your daily work itself right so you will be generating invoices for which e waivers have to be generated then and there so instead of you downloading the invoices and then going to a different portal uploading it and getting it done we have given it the entire handling within zoho books so we understood how you can easily generate e waivers from within the system and print them as well and then moving on we spoke about one more interesting uh, uh, one more interesting update from gst portal that is the e invoicing so uh, how effectively you can uh, create e invoices from zoho books itself for your rb to b and overseas transactions so all you need is you need to update zoho Co corporation as your gst suvidha provider and once it is done uh, enable the e invoicing here in zoho books so once the e invoicing is enabled as in when you create any transaction for your b to b customer or an overseas customer you will be prompted to push it to the portal so you can just push it so the portal verifies the information which you have furnished to them like the supplier information and the bio information the item details the hsn codes etc once everything is valid they will uh, send the invoice back digitally signed with a qr code the acknowledgement number and the acknowledgement date so all of this is just a procedure if i explain the procedure it is taking too much of time but again all of this can be done within a few seconds in zoho books that is how effective it is and we also understood about the various other functionalities how you can bulk push it or you can uh, cancel even cancel the invoices which ha which have some any incorrect or generated by mistake and how you can even recall the invoices if you have marked it as cancel by mistake then we understood about uh, the tds and tcs handling within zoho books how you can uh, create the different tds and tcs taxes and uh, you can even applicable date etc and the accounts uh, can be chosen for tracking purposes and how you can apply it in a sales transaction if the tds can be applied in while creation of a sales transaction or during your payment collection and uh, applying uh, your tcs how system uh, smartly prompts you whenever the turn whenever the transaction limit uh, transaction with that customer has crossed over 50 lakhs in the particular financial year and then we uh, delved into de uh, delve deep into audit trial uh, as mandated by the mca so we understood uh, the how the activity log and audit trial report in zoho books uh, records all the activities performed in the organization by different users and how you can even view the trial of the uh, transaction or any master so as in when you edit or update any transaction yes all the um, all of it is tracked in the audit trial and you can compare two different versions to understand what information has been updated removed or added and then uh, we saw about the other compliances which are available within zoho so how many additions we have and uh, the tax compliances in the other countries as well uh, so with this uh, so, we have come yeah, to the... we do have a few questions uh, you we can show uh, all those slide uh, yes. so the first question is how to record payable transaction in foreign currency for payment to the vendor outside india 
and its procedure through payment or uh, procedure of payment through Zoho books. This question is apart from taxes. So we can show this slide. Absolutely. Uh, so in Zoho books, let me quickly share my screen. So as in when you create any vendor itself, it will ask you if the vendor belongs to a, uh, if the vendor is an overseas vendor. So you can just enter overseas. So let me just quickly create a custom vendor. And when you enter an overseas vendor and it will ask you what currency it belongs to in, uh, let me give a different currency. And now save it. So now this is an overseas customer. Whenever I'm creating any new transaction for this uh, vendor, sorry, for this vendor, the values would be displayed in a currency which is already chosen for them. So it will not be displayed in the base currency of your organization. Even though the base currency of my organization is INR, it will be displayed in the currency you have chosen for the particular client. And, and the exchange. yeah, so we also integrate uh, with open exchange rate to fetch the exchange rate. And uh, so all you'll have to do is uh, you can simply uh, enable this feature. So the exchange rate would be auto populated um, uh, by the system automatically. You don't have to enter it manually. In case you don't want to follow open exchange rate, we do have the option to edit and update the exchange rate here. So, uh, so uh, whenever you're creating a transaction itself, the transaction will itself will be in the um, foreign currency. If in this case it is uh, she is creating in USD, so uh, the transaction itself is creating in USD, and the um, exchange rate is getting populated automatically. So once you have created this entry, the entire transaction for this particular vendor will still remain in USD only. Even in the PDF which you view, it will available. It will be available in USD only. And when you're recording a transaction, there might be a different exchange rate coming into picture. So in that case, automatically, it, the since I have enabled the automatic exchange feed rates from open exchange rate, it is populating by default. Say, for instance, if I have to edit it, I can just edit it here and save. So now whatever was the difference between the exchange rate given in the transaction and the payment, it will be tracked in the exchange gain or loss account automatically. So you need not pass any other uh, journal entries for this. It will be automatically taken care by the system itself. And uh, we can also explain about uh, currency adjustments. Yes, absolutely. So we have something called as currency adjustment, which is generally used for reinstating your currency at the end of the financial year or at the end of the quarter or month, if there are receivables and payables, uh, so wherein you would like to update it. So in that case, you can just pass an uh, adjustment entry. You can select the currency. You can enter the date of adjustment. And uh, the exchange rates are automatically fetched based on that particular date. And you can enter the notes. So whatever accounts receivable or accounts payable is available on the mention on the particular date, within the particular date, it will be mentioned here. And based on the exchange rates, which you have entered in the transaction and the exchange rate entered here, your exchange gain or loss would be available. You can simply click select and you can make an adjustment. So the difference will be tracked automatically in the exchange gain or loss account. You can verify that in the report section also. So uh, if you go to report section, we have an exclusive report for realized gain or loss and unrealized gain or loss. So you can customize this report as well. So you can customize for which date range you want to run this report and you can choose to export this as well. And in case of unrealized gain or loss, you can add the exchange rates for a, uh, as on the particular date and run the report to get an uh, evaluation of how uh, the gain or loss might look like.
I hope uh, we answered the foreign currency question. Uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, can sales or purchase data be bulk uploaded from Excel to Zoho? Absolutely. Uh, so let us say you are migrating your data or your client data to Zoho Books. We will explain the entire process right from opening balance and the uh, uh, ex import options available. Uh, probably uh, Priya can uh, explain simply about opening balance and the uh, bulk import option that we have for sales as a purchase mode. Okay, so when you're migrating from uh, any other accounting application into Zoho Books, the first and foremost step is to bring in all your master data. So the master data here is mainly your chart of accounts. So you can import your chart of accounts. So this bulk import option is not just specific to your transactions. It is available for the masters as well. So you can just click on this three dots and you can click on import chart of accounts. So we have a sample file given for each of the module. You can just download the sample file modify your data into as per the sample files format and you can import it yeah we can just open up one and show yes sure uh your i mean for sales and trans uh, sales and purchase transactions i mean are you explaining about chart of account sample file yes uh okay that uh, you can create your own chart of account and add it oh sorry yeah yeah, go ahead. Okay, so uh, once you have uh, up, down uh, imported all your masters, and then you can just go to your items. So items are the goods or services which you sale and purchase. Again, all of this can be bulk imported. And next comes your most important part, your clients. So this is your customers and your vendors. So once all of these data, the masters are imported into Zoho Books, you can proceed to add your bank accounts. So basically, what, what are the bank accounts or any credit cards you're using, you can add it here. And once all of this is done, you no, can update we have it. multiple options to add your bank account as well. You yes. can explain that part also. Yes. So we have multiple methods when you add a bank account. So we uh, connect with a third party service provider to fetch your feeds automatically. So you can click on connect now. And uh, here you can just select the bank which you want to integrate and uh, we support a number of banks. The service provider supports a number of banks here. So from here, from this list, you can just select the bank. You can enter the credentials and it will be validated in the back end and you can add the account directly. So once the account is added, uh, the feeds would be fetched automatically as and when you log in. Or you can also choose to uh, add it manually and import your transactions for reconciliation. And uh, in addition to this, Zoho Books directly integrates with some of the banks like uh, Standard Chartered Bank, Yes Bank, HSBC, and Kotak Mahindra. So with these four banks, we have a direct integration with the banks itself. So here we will uh, fetch the live feeds and your live account balances. So and even you can initiate your vendor and GST payments from the product. Uh, so someone had asked about the foreign payments, right? In some bank, I think in HSBC, the foreign payments is also, the cross-border payments is also supported. So instead of you manually making your vendor payments, you can just do it within Zoho Books itself. So to answer your questions, yes, the sales and purchase data can be bulk uploaded via Excel or CSV into Zoho Books. And we have sample files available for almost all the modules. You can simply download the sample file and uh, whatever you have ex you, you, the software that you are using, you can simply copy paste that into the sample file based on the uh, row header which is available in the sample file and then import it into Zoho Books. So let me quickly show you. So if you would like to import all of your transactions, just go to uh, the module and click on import. Uh, you can download the sample file and update your uh, data in the sample file. You can just select it and click next. So here uh, you will have to make sure that the Zoho Books field is mapped with the cor corresponding import field headers so that the data is correctly mapped and imported successfully. So once this mapping is done, you can simply click next and your data will be imported into Zoho Books in a single click. Yeah, so I hope uh, we answered that question. And how does the payment goes to the bank for payment in 
foreign currency that is another question okay so i believe you're talking about the direct integration which is available uh, with certain banks right so yes zoho books uh, seamlessly integrates with uh, hsbc bank so let me quickly show you the help document related to it so i think you are able to view my screen uh, so zoho books directly integrates with hsbc bank so if you have a corporate account with hsbc you can just integrate it with zoho books uh, so the integration part remains very simple you just need to uh, set up click on setup now and uh, automatically if you have uh, if you have the credentials then you can click yes so these informations have to be filled in the profile id client id client secret etc and you will have to configure a secret pin also so this pin is important you will be using this pin when you are initiating the payments so once you have done it you will be able to initiate your payments not just uh, within india even you can initiate cross border payments using this hsbc integration so it would look like this so as in when you have created a bill it will show pay via the particular bank so you can just click on it and then you can directly make the payment transfer from zoho books itself rather than navigating to the banking portal making the payment and coming back here and making an entry you can directly initiate the payment from the zoho books itself and automatically the payment entry would be posted in the particular bank i hope this answers your question um we can also explain let us say he is not using direct bank integration okay. uh, i'm not sure he is talking about direct bank if he in case if he is not talking about direct bank feeds then um, so for foreign currency how we will um, how he can record is what his question is yes absolutely so if you are using a foreign currency account itself and if you are posting the entries there it would get posted or if you are using an inr account also it would get posted so let me quickly add a um, usd account so now i had created an entry uh, for a foreign customer right uh, so let me quickly edit this payment entry so now i had recorded the payment for this particular bill on a date and uh, the paid through account is the particular account the usd account so now when i navigate to the banking module just click on the account and under all transactions automatically the entry would be posted here so here you can check the vendor payment has been initiated so this uh, when you are importing the transactions you can just match it and you can reconcile proceed with the reconciliation uh the next question is what is the time limit to push invoices to the irp portal okay so uh, right now i think uh, only for businesses with a revenue of 100 crores or above there is a time limit to push your invoices uh, i think it's 7 days from the date of generation so uh, for other turnovers you can push the invoices there is no restriction which is uh, imposed by the irp portal as such zoho books doesn't have any restrictions on it so we try to bring in uh, as and when the norms are passed by the irp portal yes i i hope that answers your questions if you still have any questions on that you can post it and how to manage inventories for a good based client okay so we have uh, uh, you can maintain that using zoho books that we will show live as you have asked about uh, managing inventory specifically i'd like to add uh, we do have a product called zoho inventory uh, specifically to uh, for managing your orders and things so that is an exhaustive inventory management software which is again pre integrated with uh, uh, zoho books so if your clients or your uh, if your clients requirement is to manage exhaustive inventory then um, you can use zoho books along with zoho inventory which is a pre integrated application with books now we will show you live on how you can manage uh, your inventories for a good placed goods 
based clients okay so zoho books also con comes with an inventory tracking feature so to enable it just go to settings and items so here we have this enable inventory tracking option so you once you enable this option you will be able to track inventory for your uh, items so i have enabled the inventory tracking now as in when i am creating any item here i can just choose to track inventory for the particular item and you can select the required stock account and the reorder point is basically when your stock when the stock has to be replenished so if your uh, quantity if the stock on hand falls below this particular point system will automatically notify you that you need to replenish the stock so you can just mention your reorder point and if you have any opening stock and the opening stock value this can be mentioned so as and when you create transactions this inventory ac uh, asset account would be impacted so let me quickly show you so this is an inventory item for which i have created a bill and the inventory asset account is being hit so here whenever i create an item the stock gets replenished and whenever a sales invoice is created then the stock goes out of hand so we follow the fee for first in first out method to track inventory and we also have a range of reports to help you with the inventory uh, tracking of the product and to understand what is the uh, how much stock you currently have on hand or say how much stock you have committed to your customers via the sales orders or how much inventory value inventory value the asset value you hold etc the aging summary the stock summary reports so we have a range of reports in inventory also so this inventory feature is inbuilt within zoho books if you want additional advanced inventory tracking features like say serial number tracking or batch number tracking or if you have various warehouse management then you can very well use our uh, ultimate plan of zoho uh, elite plan of zoho books wherein it comes with an advanced inventory add on or you can even subscribe to zoho inventory which again can be uh, integrated with zoho books okay Uh, I hope uh, we answered this question. And the next question is on fifteen CA or ten F requirement. So uh, we don't uh, specifically support uh, uh, these, uh, uh, you know, denomination filling of uh, for banking. I believe you are talking about uh, updating these details to a bank, right? We don't specifically support that. You, would. but however, we do support uh, foreign currency payments. So as uh, Priya previously mentioned, we have a direct integration. uh with uh, standard chartered and hsbc bank and using uh, those integration you can directly uh, make payment to your vendors uh, even in foreign currencies that is possible and uh, the next question is on how to manage bank reconciliations in zoho books so we would like to uh, uh, again explain uh, as priya already mentioned uh, there are multiple ways in which you can configure your bank account in zoho books you can add your bank account uh, using uh, our third party integration so when you click on add our bank credit card account you can add your bank or credit card account in zoho books so the fee will, will be fetched uh, by the system once in 24 hours and we do have an option to import your bank statement as pdf or csv file so whenever you want to do reconciliation before even you start the reconciliation process you have you can import your uh, bank statement as csv tsv or uh, pdf whatever format you have you can import that and once that is done all your transactions would be available in zoho books now we will show you how you can reconcile your uh, books of accounts with your bank account okay uh, so as sandeja mentioned you can import add your bank transactions and choose to uh, automatically fetch the fees via our service provider or you can import the bank statement as well So here, whatever transactions uh, which is fetched automatically or imported will be listed as uncategorized transactions. You can click on the entry, and the system smartly recognizes the possible matches which are available based on the value of the bills, credit notes, or invoices created for the particular range. So you can either, if it is correct, you can either choose to select it, and you can match it, and uh, you can create a new transaction for the pending value, or you can categorize it manually. Uh, so in this case, I'm just categorizing it manually.
So once the entry is matched or categorized, it automatically moves into the all transactions tab. So it will be removed from the uh, uncategorized transaction and it will move to the all transactions tab. And once you have categorized or matched all the entries for the corresponding period, you can choose to reconcile your bank account. So just click on the settings icon here and click on reconcile account. So once you click on reconcile now, it will ask you for the start date, end date and your closing balance as per the uh, bank statement. So as on 31st of October, what would be your closing balance? So let me quickly enter. So here, this would populate all the transactions which you have categorized or matched. And if there is any difference, the system would also prompt you here. So if this difference is zero, it means that your bank transactions exactly match with your books of accounts and you can proceed with the reconciliation. In case of any differences, you can just hit save and reconcile later. And you can go back to the transactions, cross verify if any of it is missed. You can update it and you can come back and reconcile it again. Uh, I hope that answers your question. And the next question is on how to account for transactions through corporate credit card given to seniors. Okay. Uh, so I believe you were talking about uh, the corporate credit travel. card, which are travel cards, which are given. So for this, we have a product called Zoho Expense. For expense management itself, we have a product called uh, Zoho Expense, wherein you can manage your co corporate cards there. Uh, so for your travel expenses, which you uh, have or any reimbursements, which you do, you can use Zoho expense and you can add the corporate cards there, which was provided to your employees or the senior citizens in your case. And it can be done. So all these finance products are integrable with one another. So it can be integrated with Zoho books. The accounting entry will be automatically posted in books, whereas the expenses, the reimbursement and other handling uh, related to your travels will be taken care of in the expense itself. So again, as Sanduja said, we also use our Zoho expense. So as and when we do a travel or a client visit, we also use Zoho expense to get our expenses reimbursed. Yes. Uh, so we almost, uh, we have answered all your questions. We almost come to an end of the session. If you still have uh, any more questions, uh, we are happy to take up. From our side, we are done. If we are happy to take up any questions if you have. Uh, over to you, Sheetal, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Sindhu, ma'am. And thank you, Priya, ma'am, so much for okay. taking up this session uh, in such an explicit manner. You have explained everything with respect be it to GST, uh, be it uh, with MCA compliances, audit trails, and taking up the branches. And the questions that you have answered and explained, the manner you have taken it up is exemplary. <laughs> Uh, I would like to uh, congratulate you guys uh, for taking up these sessions and I'm sure our attendees have a lot of takes away from today's uh, session and uh, we would like to thank WIR also and its entire team for organizing such wonderful events and having this, uh, what do we say, uh, a live example how to use Zoho for our tax compliances in a very easy way. We can do this, be it for reconciliation of GST, taking up various, I am sure I, the attendees who have asked you questions are satisfied with the way Priya ma'am has explained in detail the entire procedure. Thank you, Sinduja ma'am, and thank you, Priya ma'am, for this wonderful session. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, team WIRC. Yeah, thank you for giving us the wonderful opportunity, WIRC team. Thank you, the entire team. Thank you. I wish all the continued success to all the members present here. Thank you so much. Thank you.